Uh, the U.S does not accept the jurisdiction of any international human rights body. Uh, that comes from this racist doctrine of discovery, which says that when England discovered uh, North America, uh, it held superior title over lands occupied by Indians. And so when the U.S. acquires that land from England after the revolution, the U.S. now has that superior title. And one of the things that happens with that superior title under the doctrine of discovery is that Congress has plenary power. So therefore, Congress can do whatever it wants with Oak Flats, right? So that's that's the sort of modern discourse that you get. And it all sounds great, and it can all go through the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court will say, well, the Constitution gives Congress this plenary power, the tribes are given notice and due process, too bad they lose. That's not the way human rights talks about it. That's not the way that the UN Declaration talks about it. Their opinions, their investigations, their reports do have influence because it undermines US credibility, for example, uh, to put pressure on Latin American governments to recognize the rights of communities affected by large-scale projects. When those Latin American governments say, well, what are you doing with Rio Tinto? The United States has a trust responsibility with these tribes, like mine, and guaranteed us protection but as you know, that was never true. Never. Rio Tinto and Resolution plan to use a technique called block caving, which is a very destructive form of mining. In block caving, by necessity, everything on the land surface that's above the block cave zone collapses into a crater by design. I was told that 55 miles south of Superior, in a place called San Manuel, there was a subsidence crater left by a block cave mine that closed in 2003. A picture is worth a thousand words. had used it and the method was one to extract a large amount from underground, take out the commodity metals and you would not replace that waste. You would create a void and you would want mother nature to cave in that area so you could continuously pull out that ore that was falling in. The proposed mine that Resolution has outlined for us is going to have quite a few effects on the archaeological resources of the area. Because of the way that they plan to mine it, uh, that will effectively destroy every archaeological site out there. One of the biggest myths perpetrated is the idea that somehow this new mine is going to be good for the economy of Arizona. If you look around you, if you look behind me, you can see what benefits long term 100 years of mining have brought to the town of Hayden. In fact, if you go to Kearney, Superior, Miami, many of the small mining towns in Arizona that are dependent upon mining, you'll find much the same thing. The, the economies are lagging, businesses have been shuttered, and generally things are not good. There are a number of 100-year-old mining communities that do have vibrant economies today. And if you want to look at some of those examples, you know, go to Bisbee, go to Jerome, and take a look around you. One thing that you'll notice about those economies today is that they have diversified into recreation, into arts, into other things, and that mining is not the predominant industry there anymore. You know, it's, it's a unique artist community where most of the mining towns dried up. And yeah, I kind of went the artist route just because after the mine closed in the 70s and whatnot, you can, I think the mine closed in the 60s, but by the 70s you could buy a house really cheap around here. So you had a bunch of artists that moved in 
and then all the tourism kind of just followed after that. They heard about this place. It was sort of like a Santa Fe or something like that. I think that's exactly what Superior has the ability to do, but that will be precluded completely if resolution goes ahead and destroys everything around here that would bring people in for other reasons. A recent study that was done by the Outdoor Industry Association has revealed that outdoor recreation in Arizona is worth more than $10 billion a year. And that's worth more than twice as much in terms of economic impact as all of mining is, according to the Arizona Mining Association website. And for 15 years running, Oak Flat was the site of the largest climbing competition in the world. All of the economic impact due to mining in Arizona is about 1% of the state's total GDP, and that's clearly not worth the massive destruction that's permanent and everlasting. When the last mine kind of wound down its operations uh, around Superior, the town started to, to think into the future about uh, developing a tourism industry, uh, which is a pretty good idea for around here. It's a lot of scenic country. But I think what they may find happen as the resolution mine winds down, as it will, is that they're going to be left in a little bit different position than they were the last time. One of the big draws for tourists in the area, Oak Flat, will be gone. And one of their other big draws, the Arizona Trail, is going to be uh, sitting alongside a giant blowing dust pile. It is this giant blowing pile of dust that has the residents of Queen Valley concerned. Rio Tinto plans to dump the 1.6 billion tons of waste from their project only three miles upwind and upstream from their community. So while the Apache fight for their sacred land on the east side of Superior, here on the west side, this community has come together to fight for their homes. Queen Creek runs right through Queen Valley. It used to always run water. That's what I heard. It was always filled and now not. It's not. Right, because Resolution Copper is pumping a million gallons a day down to Florence, right past Queen, Queen Valley. And so the, the ecosystem along that river is going to be destroyed as well? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that's not even counting the dust issues that we're going to have uh, and, and the air pollution that because of that tailing pipe. It is a desert. It and blows. When, when I uh, ask the resolution about it, they talk about, uh, well, we're going to keep the pile dampened down. Uh -huh. Well, that sounds good to a lot of people in the audience, but all you got to do is, is figure it out. And if you put one cup on one square foot one time a day, it'll take 20 million gallons a day to do that. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to do it. Yeah. And so here's, a, here's an area that's part of Tonto National Forest that belongs to all of us, that they're going to put a tailing pile, and when they leave, it's going to be the responsibility of Tonto National Forest. In, in the sun, in the heat of the summer day, actually vaporizes the mercury in those tailings. It gets into the air, and it is turned into methylmercury, the most dangerous kind, and, and the concentrations actually blow off the tailings, into the, the neighboring area. So, potential effects on water. I think we've talked about some of these already. They can affect you in a myriad of ways. You can have these storm events. We can have overtopping, flooding, other breachings to the tailings impoundments. We can get the runoff carrying the tailings into waterways. And this is the Mount Pauly issue, and this happens and can happen often. Uh, earthquakes and landslides and slips. That sounds really kind of weird, an earthquake, but we just had an earthquake, not a small one. Um, infrastructure failures. This is the pipes pumping, all of these different things, impoundments, and the acid mine drainage and seepage. And that really concerns me for you guys and for the surrounding community because there's not going to be a liner. What can we do? I mean, what can I do? Because I can't speak for everybody still. So. You can't sit back and let these guys fight for you. Help these guys help you by educating yourselves. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the trails out here that they want to bury are some of the best in Arizona. We have people come from all over the country that come down here, and we think that's an abomination what they plan to try to do on putting this tailing file in our backyard. And what really concerns me is I've heard comments by people that have said, oh, this will take 40, 50 years for the tailings to really start to affect people. Um, 
even if it is that long, we have a responsibility to generations, um, to our children and our grandchildren, to not let this happen. Um, it, we don't want to devastate the environment. And we have company. <laughs> so the local residents decided to track down Rio Tinto and have a little talk. These are not going to leak and blow. We got to design them to where they don't do that. Or at least we got to be able to control them. You're putting a liner down then? Well, it, well, we'll talk about that. On the oh, liner okay. on this side right now, the, the current design does not have one. Okay. But the oh. reason why we don't have one right now is because if you look on surface, it's basically considered somewhat of an impermeable rock. Um, if you're on permeable rock, that means it's not going to leach in, it's going to surface run, correct? What are you going to do to control no, that? Well, basically here, you've got controlled drainages that go through an impermeable rock along a ridge line. So basically you've got a series of canyons of which we've got to basically create what we call an actual water dam to control that. So you've got to put in grout curtains and build up a dam downstream of the actual facility and basically control it from there. <coughs> so all that seepage that, that would possibly escape through the embankment has to be collected and pumped back into the tailing spot. Have you seen and then, what, have a way to what, clean the water when it comes out through the bottom of the dam or when you open the floodgates? Well, that's where you have multiple levels of contingency. So you have dams built downstream of dams. Basically. And all the heavy metals will settle in the bottom <coughs> oh, of those no, ponds. No, 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 no. Basically, you know, that's, that gets a bit complicated and stuff like that, but we do a flotation process where we separate out the sulfur and sulfides and metals. And what do you do with them? We store them within the facility within the slime ponds. So basically, they're a long ways from the exterior of the bank. Where are the slime ponds come from? Right in the center of the facility. Of, of the mine? Right where we're standing now. Yeah. This is it. Right. This, this is, is it. where all the spreads are going to be. Yeah. No, it's, it's ground sand. It's ground sand. It's 98% silver. Oh, good. You know, resolution tells you that the tailings consist mostly of sand, which is true. Uh, it's mostly sand, but there are some very nasty metals in it. This will go into the aquifer and will be distributed through the rest of Arizona, actually. Long-term exposure to heavy metals, which accumulate in the body and do not leave you, are going to eventually cause trouble. Trouble like cancer. It's like taking a glass of water and putting a little cyanide pill in the water. It's mostly water. The numbers thrown out there on how high it is, it doesn't get much higher than where you're standing. Well, the numbers thrown out there happen to be their own, and it adds up roughly to the volume of this mountain. And by their own admission and their own numbers, they are claiming that they're going to be the largest producing mining company for copper in, in North America. Well, you know, you've got to look at both sides of the issue here. If, if they're going to create that much revenue and tonnage and production of copper and other commodity metals, possibly, they're going to have to produce a lot more waste. I have been told and watched over my life, oh, it'll be fine, and it's not, and then whoever the company was, they go, bye-bye, mm -hmm. and it's over. And then, and then this beautiful, very, very fragile, very unique environment is ruined forever. And what are we doing to our environment and to our children and grandchildren? That's, that's my concern. I won't be here. That's not what I'm finding. You, you know, <laughs> you know um, th <laughs> those are very valid it's not concerns. Now. It's, yeah. Down the road, the future, Absolutely. of course, of course, you know, you know, we won't even have any construction here for years, but you know, a decade. Matter. But but that but this the planning stage is right now. I know. And uh, <coughs> those, you know, the archaeological evaluations, um, those are very important. The cultural evaluations that we have to do uh, with the Forest Service. Over the last few years, uh, with funding from the Resolution Mine. Uh, there has been an ongoing ethno-historic study of the Oak Flat area 
Uh, in fact, uh, a very large area uh, extending well beyond Oak Flat itself to cover all the potential area that could be affected by the Resolution Mine project. But already, uh, Resolution has been trying to discredit the results of it and saying that Oak Flat is not significant to the, to the Apaches, that it really doesn't have any importance, that it isn't sacred. And yet, this flies in the face of every federal law that provides protection for these kinds of things, because we have definitely identified people who have demonstrated that significance uh, through the interviews. So, regardless of what they say about the project that they've been funding, it has very specifically shown how important Oak Flat is uh, to the Apaches and to every other tribe in central Arizona who not only have their own connections to the place but who support the Apache and their connection to the place. Is this normal for the, for the U.S. Okay. to okay. let you. a foreign country come in and screw up the land? Like well, what is a foreign company nowadays? Well, it's not going over to China or Japan or England yeah. or wherever. Our biggest stockholders are Americans. They are. Look it up. <laughs> So where does all decades. this copper go then? Oh, it goes into a market. This group represents 25% of the copper uh, that the United States would be using. We're right now importing 35% of our, uh, our copper. And since this copper is going to be sold on the market by a foreign company, when we want some, we'll be importing it too. Because of all your neat designs, you got down and said, that's perfect, it's going to break, and it breaks. Now what? We've got contaminated land forever out here. You got stuff going past that to the Gila River watershed downstream. You people take your toys, you go home to your homes wherever that. And then at the end of mine life, when they're out of money, they're not producing any revenue anymore. If there are lawsuits, the subsidiary simply files bankruptcy and there's no recourse to the parent company. Trust in me, just in You see, I kind of wonder <clears throat> why a company would be willing to invest as much as you are on testing in all that the various aspects if, if you are pretty sure that you're going to get a go-ahead. Safe and 